a generation. These were not just London's games, but thanks to Charles Allen's Nations and Regions group at LOCOG, those of the entire United Kingdom. Buoyed, buoyed by the medal success of a host nation, this country has enjoyed a real feel-good, sorry, feel-good factor like never before. There have been multiple examples of teams working closely together, LOCOG interacting seamlessly with the International Paralympic Committee and similarly with the Mayor's Office, Transport for London, the City of London, the security services and both central and local governments. But with those irrepressible smiles and fountains of knowledge, the biggest cheer, it's already happened but it's going to happen again, the biggest cheer of London 2012 should be reserved for now as we say thank you again to the thousands of games makers. Similarly, thanks to all international and national technical officials and classifiers. And now let us also acknowledge another band of people that stepped into the breach and went far beyond the call of duty. The British Armed Services and the Emergency Services. The compact and excellent Paralympic Village became home from home and launched 4,250 athletes into orbits of achievement which had no limits. Paralympians, you gave to the world feats of speed, endurance, dexterity and skill many did not think possible. You led the world's media to wax lyrical over your performances and left millions of Paralympic sports fans to create what Boris Johnson said to me last week, a wall of noise in the venues, hungry and desperate for more. The Paralympic Games have truly come home and found their pathway to the future here in London. The Paralympic spirit, which saw its first sparks of life in Stoke Manorville some 64 years ago, has followed a supercharged and surreal existence over the last 12 days. This has made the London 2012 Paralympic Games unique. And without doubt, in my mind and those of the athletes, the greatest Paralympic Games ever. I call on you all gathered here and watching around the world to take this unique sporting spirit to all four corners of planet Earth where you will make new friends, have fun and inspire them to light the flame in their hearts. This is an event absolutely no one wants to end. We know that. And these games have changed us all forever. But before I close, I want to link Stephen Hawkins' words about changing perceptions across multiple dimensions from the ethereal opening ceremony to the words of a five-year-old called George Glenn. A few days ago, George was reading a book entitled Treasure with his mum, Emma, my daughter Gael's best friend. 
The first page showed a man with an eye patch, a hook for a hand, a parrot on his shoulder, and a wooden leg. Emma asked George who the man was, expecting him to say a pirate. But he said, mm, well, he's only, he only has one leg. He must be an athlete. Kids just get it. Now, thanks to the amazing performances we've seen here, we all do. Finally, the time has come for me to declare the London 2012 Paralympic Games closed. But we all know that these Paralympic Games will live on for an eternity. I call upon Paralympic athletes from all over the world to meet in Rio de Janeiro in four years' time, where once again you will inspire and excite the world with your sporting excellence. And I have to end with a big, big thank you to the people of this great city of London And to the entire population of the United Kingdom. Thank you. So to summarise the speech there of Sir Philip Craven, President of the International Paralympic Committee, an amazing Paralympic Games, fueling elite sport. It was inspirational, had an unprecedented feel-good factor across speed, endurance, dexterity and skill presenting and giving a wall of noise and a pathway to the future, the greatest Paralympic Games ever. Now to extinguish the flame. Johnny Peacock and Ellie Simmons. They both take the flame to show that the flame will continue to burn on for the next four years in the lead up to Rio 2012. It's 2016. You just don't want the year to end. No, I don't. <laughs> So track gold medalists here, swimming gold medalists here. Ellie Simmons, one of the most successful female swimmers in the aquatic centre, defending her title successfully. 17 years of age now, the youngest competitor, just 13 years of age, four years ago. And she will certainly be around in Rio, if not beyond. So the flames there symbolising the internal nature of the flame living on among each and every one of us. There's 
Jay Z and Rihanna now on stage as the flames we shared amongst the cast. So every week we are Microphone fee It's the return of me God, peace, God Uh, and ain't nobody fresh I'm um, in Mason, uh, Mark and Margella On the table screaming The other side jealous We gotta make it The brother got a table For the fellas They ain't get no okay. They should throw their hand in Cause they ain't got no space uh, my whole team got dope So my bank cat is looking like Looking there, star, what's up? It's a game And that was Run This Town, performed by Coldplay, featuring Jay-Z and Rihanna. The second single from Jay-Z's album, The Blueprint 3. The original version features Rihanna and Kanye West. Oh. How y'all feeling tonight, London? Three. 